Let's take a closer look now at what those job numbers mean for the Canadian economy as a whole. Peter Rantunez is Chief Economist with the Conference Board of Canada. He's with me in studio. Thanks for joining me. It's my pleasure. So let's start with that big number, the 107,000 uh, new jobs created in April. And of course, there was a sense that while there might be uh, a gain in, in the labour force, certainly not to that extent. So what's your reaction? Well, I don't think anybody would have made that call, right? Uh, this is the strongest job gain that we've seen since the labour force in its current form has been active in, in, since 1976. Uh, we saw an addition in just one month that's about 0.6% added to employment. So it means uh, it means that we're essentially on a phenomenal start to the year. Uh, it's not just April that we've that we've seen strong gains. In fact, over the past six months or so, employment has been really quite strong. And uh, that's good good news story for Canada. You know, we keep talking about consumers being stretched. Uh, we keep talking about consumer deleveraging in, in this uh, year coming. This is going to help sustain uh, that consumer spending. So how do you explain that jump? Because obviously that's, um, you know, when you're talking about a tenfold increase, is there something that we can uh, point to specifically? Well, I mean, it's, uh, well, we've, I, I think every time we look at these kind of monthly numbers, we have to, these are surveys and they give us a point estimate with a lot of variance around them. So I think what's really important here is that the trend is, is continuing and very strong trend. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, we could end up with next month with some job losses and the, and the trend would still be strong. So I think we have to be a little careful around those point estimates. Uh, but, but no, it's, it's a really strong number. Uh, and the labor force survey is expansive and it should be giving us a good indication. Where the strengths have been, well, Central Canada, Ontario, Quebec has done well. Uh, Alberta has finally seen some job gains. Um, and PEI as well, relative to its economy, has done well. Most of the other provinces are, are, have stayed pretty stable. Uh, and out east, uh, we've seen a, little, a few job losses in some of those provinces. And so let's talk about the, the kind of jobs that we're seeing uh, created when you, when you drill down on, on the sectors and whether we're looking at full-time or part-time work, what do we see? Well, again, going back to the kind of longer term, like let's look at the last six months and see how we're doing rather than just take the one month. Uh, what I would say is the quality of jobs has been very, very good. And um, uh, we've seen full-time jobs. We've seen private sector jobs generally over the last six months, including uh, the data that we have for April. Uh, we've seen uh, well-paid service sector jobs like other professional, uh, excuse me, like uh, uh, professional scientific technical services jobs, which are very well-paid. Uh, and that's, by the way, is one of the categories that's seen most most of the a lot of strength in the last uh, in the last six months even though we saw a decline in that category specifically in April um, and then in other service sectors uh, wholesale and retail trade uh, construction has done well as well so I think across the board we've seen some pretty good uh, gains I think the quality is there because it's full-time uh, and mostly fairly well-paid jobs now the political debate lately has revolved a lot of the resource sector uh, the energy sector, especially in Western Canada and Alberta yeah. uh, and Saskatchewan. Do today's job numbers uh, offer any relief for workers who are struggling in that sector? I, I'm, afraid, uh, I'm afraid that sector is going to continue to face some, some troubles. Uh, and what we're seeing essentially, you know, it's important to uh, look at resource extraction. So actually people operating in the mining industry or the oil sector itself, which is a very capital intensive uh, uh, sector, and, uh, and doesn't employ a lot of people. And in that segment, uh, essentially the curtailment that's happening in Alberta, we're, we're not seeing a, a lot of growth. We saw a lot of drilling activity come off in Alberta specifically as well. So the, the extraction sector itself, not a lot of, gain, not a lot of gains. Uh, what's uh, more important though for, the province of Al for a province like Alberta is the construction jobs associated with investment in the, in the oil patch. And uh, I think the climate for investment in, uh, in the energy sector especially has been very, very, very poor. Uh, you know, we, we're not sure if we're going to get product to, to market where we've got this pipeline issue that's, uh, that's uh, hurting prices. So I think that's going to continue to, to hurt uh, Alberta and, and some of the other resource provinces. And then, uh, you know, we just talked about kind of the, the economic situation in Alberta and what the outlook is. Can you put this number, this 107,000 number into the overall context of how the Canadian economy is performing right now because, um, you know, you've got this job number, but you've also, uh, you know, you're looking at GDP growth, uh, you're looking at foreign investment as, as you're preparing your outlook for the rest of 2019. So, you know, how do those uh, various numbers uh, look when you're comparing? 
Well, it's a, it's a bit of a mystery that uh, we're seeing such strong job gains because, the, the, you know, when we look at the uh, production side of the economy, the, the, the production of goods and services, uh, it's not been that strong at all. And in fact, we're talking about an economy that's, for 2019, it's probably going to run, you know, in the one to one and a half percent range. We saw the Bank of Canada put out uh, their forecast just very recently with the monetary policy report. 1.2 is what they have at the conference board where uh, we were a little stronger at 1.4. Um, you know, if you compare that to the employment, we're talking about right now uh, about a 2.4 uh, percentage point gain in employment growth. And the problem that economists have with that is that if you see uh, employment growth stronger than output, that means your productivity is actually declining. And this is something that's really not sustainable, right? Uh, we can't afford to, uh, uh, to produce uh, with more labor uh, as time goes by. We need, as a developed economy, to be capital intensive and produce the same amount with less labor, uh, productivity gains. So this is, uh, right now, I, as I said, it's great news. We're going to see labor income up. We're going to see consumption hold steady uh, and so continue to support the economy. But this is not sustainable longer term. We need to do better on the output side of the economy. So obviously, let's close on this. Uh, the 107,000 number uh, certainly already being touted by uh, the federal government as good news for the economy and, uh, and uh, a bit of a verification of, of its economic policies. Does a number like this uh, create any confidence and perhaps change how uh, Ottawa is going to adjust its fiscal plans uh, going forward? Well, I think um, what's going to happen with this, it's, it's going to push up, I think, the uh, kind of income growth estimates that uh, we have for, for in the budget. Of course, the budget uh, had stronger growth because uh, when the budget was put together with the consensus forecast, uh, they were looking at growth of 1.8% for 2019 for the year. Um, so, you know, that number has probably come down a little bit on the output side, but on the labor income side, it's going to be a bit stronger. What does it all mean? It'll likely mean that uh, you know government revenues are probably going to be a little stronger than expected. It's always good news for the for the government, um, and uh, you know uh, we'll we'll see uh, we'll see what happens. Whether we we get all of that update before the election, you know, it's yet to be seen. But uh, yeah. All right, Peter Antunes, thanks so much for your analysis today, and we'll talk again soon. It's my pleasure.